medical marijuana is, is seen as the necessity of a community that you, you should, you know, it should be available to people. Most people agree on that. There is a, as you point, I said a loophole. You quickly corrected me in an email that it's not a loophole. It's how the law is written. But doing my research on this, I was rereading the ballot initiative. And it occurs to me, and you concur, that if you have a medical marijuana facility, once the state law is enacted, the ballot initiative for recreational marijuana, that is also eligible and cannot be prohibited by the local local municipality from selling recreational marijuana, correct? Correct. From a zoning perspective, if you're in there selling medical and you get the license from the state to sell recreational, you can do it. And there's nothing the town can do about it. They can't prohibit that. They can reasonably... um, put reasonable restrictions on it, hours of operation, number of parking, all that kind of stuff, but they can't have a blanket prohibition. So if you have a medical facility going, wherever the medical facility goes, just assume for the sake of planning that it's going to be a recreational facility. So this facility on Hathaway Road uh, by the yesteryear cyclery and uh, where the old Cinema 140 used to be, oh, a, lot sure. of, a lot of joints are probably smoked in that parking lot. Yeah. Picked it on 3D night. Yeah. I would think if they yeah. had a 3D movie, there were a lot of people smoking pot. But um, that will, for all, that will likely, more than likely, also be a recreational marijuana dispensary. I, yes, and and the other piece to that is why wouldn't it be? I mean, if you're going to invest in the infrastructure in in a business to put a medical one in, the the money's not in the medical side. The money's in recreational. I mean, that's where the arguably the bigger market is. If, you know, I think when we've met with, with folks, they always are careful to say, we're just here for medical. Medical is all we're legally allowed to do. We don't know where this is going to land. But, of course, when you read the law, you're like, well, we all know where this is going to land. You right. get your foot in with the medical, and then maybe that's a third of your business. And again, I have no understanding of what the true market is, and nobody does. And that's what's kind of exciting about it is right. nobody knows what this is going to do. Right. I mean, there's some people that you talk to that say, well, the market really isn't going to be much of anything because you can people can grow their own and you can give it away. And, and you know, what's the incentive for people to go out and buy it if it's readily available? And that there may be some truth to that, that, right. that it that undercuts the, the legitimacy or the size of the market. But then on the other hand, how many people grow their own tomatoes or, or vegetables? Or right? brew their own beer. Right. I mean, you you can grow vegetables. People, some people have a vegetable garden, right? Certainly. And you know who they are because they're trying to give you squash and zucchini for the, like two months. They have bags and bags of this stuff. And you're like, if you don't eat it all, why do you grow this much? Like, why don't you just grow how much you want to eat instead of growing 6,000 zucchini and you might eat 10 or 20? Right or tomatoes? It's like people grow tomatoes. They're like, you want some tomatoes? I'm like, I don't even Not like them. Not since yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even like them. Not since I last talked to you. Right, <laughs> right, right. Oh, or they'll just give you a paper bag with your name on it. Right. Oh, oh, there's something for you. Oh, let me guess, tomatoes. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't. I, I don't envision marijuana. Do you envision being, the days when people give you a, pla- a paper right. bag with your and name like, on it? Actually, you yeah. can do that. As long as exactly. it's only an ounce. Exactly. So you can give away wheat. So, um, yeah, like you get, you know, you go over the guy's house that grows the wheat. And, oh, by the way, there's some train wreck there for you. I, I put it in a little little baggie What's for you. What's train wreck? I wouldn't know. Oh. Um, purple haze. Purple kush. There's Acapulco some purple kush. Gold. There's some Acapulco gold in a tiny bag there for you under Pain an ounce. Panama red. And you're like, enough already. I have, every time I come over here, you try to give me this homegrown <laughs> stuff. Right. Um, I can I just go down to the store and buy it. Well, no, I, but why but your would you? Your point is people just go to the store and buy it. But no, why would you? Why buy would it? anybody? Right. I mean, in my world, I like to do stuff. So I would want... I He's would a rather, car racer, folks. We'll get to that in a minute. I would rather grow... If I wanted to smoke pot, I'd rather grow it myself and get into that. I mean, it would be a hobby, right? right. And I think that for a lot of... Not a lot of people, but for a segment of the people that use weed... They've probably already been doing this anyway. Right. The people have been growing marijuana already, right. regardless of the law. Because if you, you could get it illegally for about the same cost as 
or, or it'll be cheaper illegally because there'll be no taxes on it. Yeah, plus what is it? I mean, I so talked to... the incentive s- to buy it legally? Unless you have no guy, but everybody's got a guy that uses weed because that's how it survived all this time. Right. If Yeah, if you couldn't find marijuana... Right. Well, you don't the, deserve, then you're too dumb to be smoking pot, right? Right. So what's the incentive for the guys that, that grew it illegally all those years to go legit? Well, it's to give some legitimacy so that, you know, they don't have to go to prison. Right. It's a big letdown in life. Go to prison. <laughs> right. But I don't know. I think that, and again, who knows? Like, I, this is all assumption. I have no idea. I mean, but, I'm, I'm not going to assume I'm an expert on, on this, but... Prior to being an attorney, a, a low-life, worthless <laughs> attorney and politician who has no good ideas and no value to society, and, and according to Ferris, uh, according to well, according to more than just Ferris, let's be to, yeah, he, re- he is maybe. a representative of a segment of the community. Sure, sure, he feels no. that you low-life. That's fine. Everybody's attorneys. entitled to their opinions. Um, but my point is that prior to that, I, I, I was a marketing manager for a company, so I understand how markets work, and right. I understand how you do market research and determine the size of a market and, and whether you you know you can market share and all that stuff. Nobody knows with this, but what's great about it is is that everybody's jumping in, and I think that it, within a few years, I mean, there is this whole weird culture shift on it, too, big time. It that it's it's like. You know the the police trying to enforce what was illegal, right? And now it's like somebody's smoking a joint. But then the states, the state supreme court said you can't even search someone's car if you smell burnt marijuana right. in the car. It's not no illegal, search them. right? Right, because that was a supreme uh, yeah. judicial court case, sure, where they were pulled over in a vehicle, car was shut off, two guys smoking a joint, cops pull them out, search. And lo and behold, they do find like you yeah, know obviously. A, a gun, narcotics, and I forget <laughs> right. what they find, but right. like a bunch of illegal stuff, and that got thrown out because it was an illegal search. 